Welcome to Think Tech. We are raising public awareness about technology, energy, diversity, and globalism. This show is center stage. I'm your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. And we are coming to you from downtown Honolulu in the Pioneer Plaza, very near Kumukuhua Theater. I'm excited to introduce you to my guests today. Um, they are both participants in the Oahu Fringe Festival, which uh, opens in just a couple of weeks here. We have Peiling Gao mm -hmm. and Gwen Arba and Eli is, is joining us. And I want to uh, let everyone know right away, this is my first baby on the set. <laughs> I'm very excited for Eli. And he is integral to the piece that you are presenting with Fringe Festival. Yeah. So it just makes sense that he is here with us. But we want to make sure that he is as comfortable as possible and, and you are. So if we need to take a break a little earlier than usual, we'll just cut away um, and come back as soon as possible. But he just looks like a happy camper. Mm -hmm right now so we're good so thank you both very much for being yeah, here and I, I'm really anxious to learn about both of your acts first of all um, the fringe festival itself the entire idea of a fringe festival I love bringing uh, um, creating a space for acts that are not uh, uh, they're out of the ordinary they're experimental they're um, pushing the new boundary, and yeah. fresh yeah push the boundaries um, is this the first fr Fringe Festival the two of you have been involved in? No, um, I was involved in Fringe on the mainlands, uh, and I've been involved in every single Fringe for, for Oahu wow. Fringe, so since 2011, oh, when Misa debuted the Fringe here, um, both as an artist and in committee when Misa had a committee. Oh, okay, wonderful. Misa Tupo, who is the yes. organizer of mm. the festival here. Yeah. Okay, is this yeah, your first? And no, I was participated in a um, French festival in uh, Santa Cruz in California, oh, yeah. where I danced for another company. Yeah, and this is my second time. Oh, here in okay. Fringe, Oahu Fringe, yeah. Oh, okay. And Gwen, before I go any further, I think Eli undressed you just a little bit right before we started. So <laughs> if you... <laughs> there. Um, so the, the pieces that you both have for the festival this year, are they new? Yes, mine is. Yeah, yeah. it's a new piece. Oh, okay, yeah. good. So let's start with... Gwen, let's start with you and Eli, just in case we need okay. to cut for a moment here. While he's happy, tell us about your piece, please. Um, so our piece was inspired by all the performing artists in Chinatown area and the downtown area and um, in Honolulu who have had babies within almost a year of each other. So we have about a dozen performers who have all had babies. Um, Misa keeps saying there's something in the water. <laughs> so, <laughs> that we're all getting pregnant at the same time. But um, we were worried that we couldn't do Fringe or other productions for that matter. And this was an opportunity for us uh, to get together and have the same concerns as performing artists going in with not very flexible schedule, with the baby in tow sometimes, but we could all be understanding of each other and create a, a dance work. So it's, it's kind of a com composition, a, a compilation rather, of, of, um, of, different, of different dance pieces because all, of, all about motherhood, but all of these dancers and other performers come from various genres. So, yeah. Um, so we'll have some ballroom, some burlesque, uh, some some modern dance. It's kind of a mix, some lyrical. All are the babies on board for all of it? They're present for some of the pieces, but that's not always practical. And we were concerned uh, with them not being good with an audience, so we haven't put them in every piece. They're just. Okay. on sometimes, but all the pieces are about motherhood and the various issues, pregnancy, birth, um, nursing, family life, yeah. that kind of thing. Thank you. I, yeah. it, it is amazing. I know so many artists, actors, dancers, poets who all have babies the same age right now. Yeah. They're going to be, amazing things are going to happen when they all become adults, <laughs> <laughs> this generation of kids who all came up together. Um, I find that absolutely fascinating, and I'm really anxious to see the work. Do you feel that this has been beneficial to you as a mother going through the experience with, of, of creating the piece? Yes. I feel like we've kind of made our own little performing arts baby hooey. <laughs> oh, nice. 
yeah, let's get the Yeah, the because thing. I think, uh, you know, everybody, it, it's very different than another baby hui, a lot of baby hui's I couldn't possibly join because I have a different schedule, you know, performing artists are not available in weekends, they're not available in the evenings, that kind of thing. We all struggle with daycare, you know, some of us have yeah. a day job, some of us don't. Um, but we're trying to perform at the same time as to be new mothers, and so, um, so it's a, it's a very empathetic sort of group circle of women who are going through this together. Yeah. There we go. And when are you actually performing in the festival? We're performing. We're the first show. We're performing Thursday at uh, 6 p.m. That's January 12th. January 12th. Yeah. And are you at Mark's Garage? We're at Mark's Garage. Yeah. Okay. Um, that you're doing really well, Eli. Yeah. You're doing really well, and I just want to <laughs> hold him, but mm -hmm. that probably wouldn't be good, right, Zuri? <laughs> yeah, he might freak out. Um, it, okay, so let's let's hear about your piece. Yeah. You're, you're fairly new to the island yourself. Yeah, I just relocated here from Oakland, California, in at the end of July the, last year. Yeah, now it's 2017. Oh. Um, so I'm really new and. I'm very excited to con to connect to the community here and then to share work and um, and to know people here and to share my voice as an artist and then creating a space to improvisation to the communities and yeah so I'm really yeah. excited about this French festival. This is a good way yeah. to jump in. Um, we're going to take a quick break. Yeah. So we'll be right sure. back. We're going to yes. continue that yeah. conversation and we're going to see check in and see how Eli's doing. So we'll be right back. Please stick with us. You're watching Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Network. Aloha! How you doing? Welcome to Ibachi Talk. I'm here, Gardo the Tech Star on Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Aloha. Good, Thanks to, for have watching. Him, good, to, good to have Andrew here in the house. Please join us every Friday from 1 to 1.30 and follow us up on YouTube. And remember, as we say at the end of every show, how, how you, you doing? doing? You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, Hawaii's leading digital media platform for civic engagement, raising public awareness on tech, energy, diversification, and globalism. Great content for Hawaii from ThinkTech. Hi, we're back and we are ever so live on center stage here on the ThinkTech Hawaii Digital Network. We're talking with Peling Gao. Um, uh, so you came to the island to, you teach at the University at the of Hawaii. At the UH, yeah. I am very lucky. I'm the new faculty of uh, theater and dance department at UH Manoa. Yeah, and um, uh, my research is about improvisation and, and interdisciplinary collaboration and also teaching dance and dance lineage. So um, my work is reflecting my teaching and research, so I'm really excited about this opportunity to teach in Oahu and then also show work here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, tell us about the piece that you're presenting. Yeah, so uh, me and my lifetime partner, Gretchen Du, we just initiated this duo, improvisational duo between sound and movement called Electroviolet. And this is our debut here and then world premiere here. And our practice is to try to explore the collaboration between sound and movement in an equal footing. Because oftentimes when we say collaboration between sound and music, we, as, a, as a movement artist, we choose music or we ask musicians to compose something for us that is already existed. Mm -hmm. But we are trying to do is to find an equal footing of collaboration. We make decision and make composition at the present moment. And we are taking improvisation as a life and art philosophy just like we deal with our daily life, like when you go out, when you go to work, and then you f suddenly find, oh, there's a traffic jam or accident. And then you have to improvise as, a, as your alternate route to go to work in mm -hmm. order to not to be late. So we are actually, we are dealing, everybody's dealing with this improvisation practice every day in our daily life. So we are putting this um, idea and this device into the art making. So um, we are not dictating, we are not telling story, we are just being present and reflecting 
what we see, what we hear, what we sense at the present moment mm. at the show. So we are having two shows on, on Friday and Saturday, and both shows will be different. It's, yeah, it sounds like they yeah. will be. You're yeah. not putting any, th any plan no, into yeah. it. You have to trust yourself an awful lot to do that. It is, yeah, trust and, of course, to be vulnerable, vulnerable and mm -hmm. inviting to be seen. Like you're putting yourself there and you cannot pretend. You cannot pretend something. You know everything. It's like you have to be truly honest to yourself and then present yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, well, and both of your pieces um, uh, being devised from your present state. Yeah. Right makes right. them so much more meaningful and I swear when you watch a piece if you if you watch an improvisation piece whether it's dance or you know Saturday night live you you can tell the moment someone slips into something that's scripted or well rehearsed you know you you know when people are really present in the moment and creating along with the atmosphere at the moment yeah and then also I um, I think it's also a practice of practicing like how do we, um, what is the difference between practicing and performance? How do you feel different when you are practicing at the studio when nobody's watching or when you're performing when there's everybody's watching you? So that is also part of my research is to bring the practice into a state of performance. So mm -hmm. there's, n there's no differences between practice rehearsing and performance. So we are not aiming to an end product. We are practicing as our daily life and then the show is part of the practice. So it's not a production, it's not the end product, it's the show is our continuing, it's one of our continuing practice. Oh, that's a yeah. very interesting philosophical way to look at it. Then, then for whom are you practicing? <laughs> you know, if it's not a performance, then yeah, what? yeah. You so I mean? see, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, like you two hmm. just met. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm thinking question, about how yeah. do I put things together. Um, so I'm improvising my brain, my mind <laughs> now. Yeah, because we are. It's a contemporary dance. It's a contemporary error, and. We are showing what we have and who we are, but we are not putting a mask or tell you my story. The story is ongoing and is still existing, just right, like right now. I'm talking here, but this isn't, I didn't prepare anything, and I didn't even know what you were going to ask I don't, me. Neither did I. Yeah. It's okay. So, <laughs> so this is not a production. This is not the end product. This is a, a practice towards as a human being, as a practice, as a universe, as a, how do I say it? As an artist, we, we just keep practicing as a who we are and then try to find what we are. Yeah. And yeah. I, don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot. You're going there very nicely. That's a question that I continually ask myself and, and my guests because as an artist myself, I'm an actor, I, um, uh, and a director, uh, as, a, as a director, the first time I directed a show where mo everything's moving on nicely and we get to the night before opening night, our final dress, and I realized I had a panicky moment because anyone with 20 bucks could come into this theater and watch this precious, precious thing we had created. And I realized yeah. that I actually, as a director, enjoyed the rehearsal I wanted to stay in that rehearsal. I, I really didn't feel like I needed that audience, but of course, theater exists for the audience. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it benefits the artists so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like there's no perfect show, right? For you too, like yeah. you practice for so long and then yeah. it might happen like some accident or you just slip in your mind, and you just gotta space out and then, yeah, it's like, oh, I should have done that, or I wish it could be like that, but oh, the show is yeah. just like at that one moment. So how do you see, what is, how do you define a perfect show? 
right? A production, right? Right. And and I think the best that comes out of any performance is what happens after it's finished, and you know the artists digest the work, and the audience, you know, it brings out conversations and questions, and yeah. maybe you can get together and talk about it. And the, also the idea about sharing. Yeah. I'm not telling you or to provide evidence or this is what we believe, but it's, it's the community of sharing. So I share something and then you give me some feedback and then you share your thought with me and then we continuing of this exchange. I think it's very healthy and, and it's really good, beneficial in the community yeah. for the artists to do this exchanging and sharing voices. Yeah, yeah. I do too. And like with, with your group, to have, to have a group of young mothers all with the same age children, kind of miraculously as it happened, I'm sure that was really healthy for all of you to get together. Oh and yeah, it was a very healthy sharing. I think as far as sharing with the audience though, our rehearsal process will in no way look like our performance process. As our rehearsal, oftentimes we're rehearsing with the babies and we won't be performing many pieces with the babies. Um, so there will be a whole different level of immediacy in that, that we will have rehearsed with the babies and then we'll be performing with a swaddle or with, with nothing, like rolling around on the floor and being able to. And so it'll be, in many ways, the performance will be the first time that we've done these pieces without having to hold the babies. And so um, it will be very It'll be the first way. time? It'll be the first time that we've done it without the babies oh. for many of us. Um, yeah. So that, <laughs> that will be a whole different... That'll be a whole different experience and a whole different level of, of reality. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. For that the audience. Will be, there will be a lot of immediacy yeah. to that for but you. But yeah, a lot of the pieces are built on, on our, our stories and our um, sharing between us as performing arts new mothers. Yeah. Um, well, and then you're going to be sharing with the audience your experience. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people will be able to see that and remember or look forward to or just people like myself who never had children be able to experience it along with you. Yeah, that's the intention. That's really cool because yeah. that's what we're all, all about is sharing mm -hmm. yeah. stuff. But here's what I uh, continually grapple with as Eli shows off the contents of my purse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I always grapple with why do we feel the need why do we feel that need? As humans, we want to share. We want to connect. I, I connect with people in the elevator, you know, that I'll never see again, but for some reason, I feel that need to. <laughs> Any ideas? <laughs> well, well, I think as artists, sometimes you're having an experience and you just don't know that anybody else can empathize with it and you have to get it out there and you have to air it. You have to air, like, the issues that we've been having as mothers, like you, you go to pump at work and people think you're, you're on a break and you're playing Tetris in the bathroom, when the reality is you're in there topless with suction cups in your boobs and it's freezing cold and you have no hands to play anything. Um, that's, that's the reality. So, um, so just being able to show people. There, there are things that are, I told Carlin Wolf, there are things that are, that are mother required but are father optional. <laughs> <laughs> so we've dealt with that too. And so like even your spouse doesn't really know quite what you're going through. Um, and so it was good to explore those issues and I think it's really important to air those because like you said, not everyone knows yet or they may remember or they um, and or not remember or they may have not experienced it and so it's good to, to get it out there. Yeah. For, for uh, Yeah, for everyone involved. Yeah. And he is a born performer. He's taking to these cameras yeah. really, really yeah. well. He's doing all right. I think a lot of kids would probably freak out in this I was afraid at atmosphere here. No, he's doing really yeah. well. Yeah. Um, so about your piece, wh what do you feel, because I assume you've been involved in plenty of pieces that are well rehearsed and oh, designed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you feel about the the difference between the two, doing something that is completely in the moment? Uh, all performances are in the moment to some extent. And and I have noticed in very well-rehearsed performances, sometimes the best performances come out of a mistake. 
you know, a, a, a broken zipper or a dropped line, and then everything galvanizes, and the show just shines brighter than ever before. So there, there's always a level of immediacy. But um, what do you feel that you as a performer gain differently from creating something piece. organically on the spot? Yeah, um, yeah uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, as a, even though we're, we're an improvisation group, but I can also say we'll 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 rehearse because we've been practicing many times and then still continue can still keep practicing mm. in the studio. Um, so uh, the main differences be uh, for me between uh, performing a set work and improvisation is a state of mind. Uh, sometimes I feel a slightly different when I improvise because I, I can track of my mind and then I track of the time and space and I see the space from outside of myself and uh, I can, I feel more free to respond to what I sense, what I, what I see and what I hear. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, it, uh, when I perform for the set work, um, I track my mind too, and then I also include the environment, the audience with me, but through the practicing, I execute the movement that is set. So I, I think it's, hmm. somehow I can say it's different, and then also it's the same practice for me. It's just that you're the focusing state of differently. mind is very different. I didn't think about that, that if you're doing a rehearsed piece, you do A, B, C, and you're finished. If you are not rehearsed, you do you have to keep track of the time, to some extent, and maybe looping back, tying things up in a nice little bow um, spot. Yeah, and then also tracking the time. It doesn't just mean the set time, but something that just pop up in your mind when you are doing this movement. Like, oh, I sensed the time two years ago. I did this. It's like it, you are tracking the time in the past mm. or present moment or anything that is coming out at the present moment. So the space and time is not only, is not only uh, uh, limited to the time and space at that moment, but also it expand to a micro moment and uh, universal and larger context of the time and space. And then also deal with yeah. the memories. Yeah. yeah, I bet a lot comes up during that. Are you okay? We can take a short break if you need to. No, he looks like he's doing real well. Just wanted to check in. Um, so uh, for both of you, do you feel, um, you, you just, I was kind of surprised that you just met as we were coming over for this. Yeah. I had imagined people getting together for the Fringe Festival and there being more communication be between you, but you know, it makes sense that there wouldn't really be. At some point during the process, do you have that opportunity to mix and mingle and At a walk go? Fringe, they, have a they have an opening events, and then they have some closing events, and I think Nisa and Emily Patton are working on making some sort of events throughout the weekends or meetups at bars in Chinatown and that sort of thing. So it happens the weekend of, but before that weekend, we may not meet anybody yeah. that we know. Do you have an opportunity to see most of the acts? I know you said you had two shows, yeah. but if something's running during yours. Yeah, we get artist passes, so we can go yeah, see the shows. See the shows. Eli. Eli. Hi. I think there's something else in my purse. He's yeah. like. <laughs> but you may or may not have time to see the shows. Like you said, there may be overlap between your show and another show. Yeah. yeah. I would think that one of the, it, it's, it, it's awesome for an audience to be able to come and see these boundary pushing works, um, but also for the artists who like to push boundaries to be able to get together and see where you might go next and glean ideas yeah. for, you know, where we, what we could do together. And I'm glad you two got a chance to meet. Here yeah, and, yeah. and yeah, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, what do you uh, so outside of the Fringe Festival, you you are now teaching at the University of Illinois. Yeah, 
Are you involved in productions there? Yeah, yeah. I will be uh, choreographing pieces and producing shows for students at the department, dance department, theater and dance department. Yeah, and I also teach improvisation, composition, and modern dance technique class and dance production. So, yeah, I'm hoping that by teaching the courses, I can meet more people yeah. here and then the artists here. Yeah. Yeah, well, you come over to my theater anytime. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and Gwen, do you have a day job along with Eli? Um, I currently am mostly a stay-at-home mom, although I am very involved in the Philippine dance community here mm -hmm. on Oahu and the Japanese dance community, the Japanese classical dance community. So I'm still doing quite a bit of that. Um, and I run Spatial Sculptors, which is the um, contact improv jam on Oahu, and I do that in coordination with Laura Reichart and Mareva Minerbi. So we do that together. Oh, okay. So that's another, another side project. That's another project that you have. Um, and the, so the festival takes place January 12th, 13, 14. 14. Yeah, it's, yeah just Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yes. Yeah. Um, and the website, do you guys know the website off here? Oahu the Fringe. OahuFringe.com. Yeah, OahuFringe.com. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you're correct. Yeah. <laughs> I, did, I had to check. Um, and there's information about all of the uh, other acts as well on the website. And there are, there's a, there's a lot of Lots dance. Of, yeah, dance, theater, or um, yeah. improv, and comedy, improv, improv, improv comedy, sort yeah. of work. Yeah, yeah. there's um, an amazing amount of talent right. coming and to the, the island. And the venues are all around Chinatown. What other like, what venues other than Mark's Garage? Yeah, we are doing it on King, on King, okay. and Next Door is also participating. All Chinatown, yeah. All Chinatown, that's good yeah. to know. Yeah. And yeah, we would love to participate at Kumu, but it just didn't work out this year. Thank you both yeah. very much for being here. Thank you all three of you for being here. Thank you, Eli. Thank you. It was so nice to have you. Yeah. Bye. Thank, you. Thank you so we much for having us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I look forward to seeing. Oh, he just waved at me. Mm -hmm. Did we catch that, Zuri? Hi. Nice to have you here. <laughs> okay. Don't mind me. Thank you for being here. I would also like to thank our producer Zuri Bender, who is in my ear, and Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put all of this together. We'll see you next week. We're going to have some other acts from the Fringe Festival here. Um, no babies. I'm sorry, but we'll see you then. <laughs>